All right, please allow this um, May 21st, 2019 um, Transportation Committee of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners come to official order. Um, just for the public record, uh, this um, committee meeting is one of the ones that is actually filmed for uh, citizens to review later. We're going to go about around the room. My name is Kelly Robinson. I am the chairman of the Transportation Committee. To my right, Mark Teal, County Administrator. Jessica Theory, I'll assistant to Mark Teal. Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director of External Affairs. Miguel Valentin, Transportation Director. Gary Watson, Transit Services Division Director. Jamal Shepard, Transit Services Coordinator. De Debbie Osbacher, mm -hmm. Transitions Commute Solutions. Janet Williams, Connect Douglas Compliance Officer. Very good. All right, and um, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, um, who's also a member of this, um, will be forthcoming shortly and we'll see her in the committee when she arrives. That being said, Miguel, we've got a pretty full agenda, so let's just hit it and keep it tight. Yes, sir, uh, Chairman. The uh, first line of business is going to be a transit services update yep. on a number of topics. So I'll turn it over to Gary. Can we do part the first? Yeah, let's back up. All right. Okay. Um, if everybody had that. Um, Jessica, did you send out the committee meeting minutes to everyone as yes. we normally do? Yes, sir. Okay, has everybody had a chance to take out the meeting minutes? Yes. Uh, and assuming there's um, no amendment to object, we so get a motion to approve the meeting minutes as presented to this committee. So moved. Second. All right, Jessica, you saw who got the most in the second? Yes, sir. All right, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? We hear none. And that was what, 4 0? 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, four voting members. Mm -hmm. Got that, just? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, yeah. All right, Miguel, go. Sorry. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. The uh, transit services updates has a number of items to cover. Okay. So, uh, Gary, if you introduce those items. Yes, sir. The, the first is an update on marketing uh, with the collaborative firm. And I'm going to uh, turn the floor over to Michael Hightower with the collaborative firm for that. Uh, and uh, Danielle is going to give the presentation. Uh, good afternoon, and, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the, of the uh, committee. Uh, this is an exciting time in terms of, uh, as you know, with the, uh, the June 19th day coming. We have some extra copies over there. Oh, June 19th day coming. And I want to thank uh, Danielle and the other, other folks on our staff who have uh, worked on this. You know, come on, copies. Okay, cool. And I think, uh, uh, as, as you guys know, uh, Miguel and uh, Gary and the other staff, and Mr. Chairman, uh, we've come a long way, and, and uh, this is an exciting time. And I want to just say we're excited about June 19th, and uh, we've, we've kind of put into three, three or four buckets uh, pre the pre activities, which uh, uh, Danielle will talk about. And this past weekend, we had uh, two staff members at the uh, uh, fish fry over with the Representative Bruce. They've been and had a great uh, interaction there, Hello, Madam Chair. And also we had, obviously, uh, some others at the uh, Taste of Douglas. We had uh, three others there this weekend uh, at the Taste of Douglas. So we've had a, had, had a very uh, interactive time. And uh, Danielle's going to kind of walk through where we are now. And uh, we're excited about it. Uh, June 19th is a great day. And I think one of the things that we discussed there on yesterday was also you're having a 30-day uh, look behind after 30 days to see how things are going as well. So I think you're going to uh, like what we've done. Uh, well, uh, there are a lot of pre-launch things, uh, passing out the stickers and the brochures, a lot of pre-launch activities that she would talk about. This is, a, this is an exciting time. We're excited about it. Thank you. Danielle. Good afternoon, and, and thank Danielle. you all for allowing us to be here. Um, I think I'm going to claim double uh, dual residency on my taxes now. I'm, I'm officially being moved to Douglas County. Uh, been here so much and have always felt welcomed. Um, but having said that, this is a very exciting time, and uh, the work that we have done for more than a year is now, um, it is very apparent in every facet, uh, the momentum that has been building um, for this historic occasion of the launch of the fixed route bus system. So with that, I'll quickly go through some of the materials. I won't read all of this because you have it written before you, but as Michael has stated, there are several pre-launch activities. Um, all of this which has been done in coordination with um, the director of um, Connect Douglas uh, and um, Transit Services, um, Mr. Gary Watson. So that includes us collaborating with the Department of Communication, uh, Rick Martin. We collaborated for the press release 
um, that was released right after the launch date and launch ceremony date, um, as well as their weekly coordination efforts to release things in the Douglas County Communications um, electronic newsletter called um, Douglas County Happenings. Uh, additionally, we are continuing to do the uh, social media postings. This is just one facet. Uh, I understand that everyone is not on digital, but if I may add, it's important to sometimes quantify things and put things in perspective. Our online engagement is now at over 300, um, and that rivals uh, or, or compares with other government agencies and other um, local media outlets. We have gained the same following that they have in six months we have gained that, what they have done in two years. So I think that's worth noting. Um, additionally, every time we post, we have metrics that support that our uh, postings are reaching at minimum uh, in the range from 110 to 126 people. So that is important that that's noted, as well as people who support the initiative are now becoming equally vocal and posting and commenting on uh, our social media. So I wanted to share that additionally. Um, another major announcement, we have placed um, the launch date in the Chapel Hill News and Views as well as the Villa Rica uh, News and Views. And the ad and everything was designed by the firm and we collaborated with the publisher and approved by the director. The second direct mail piece, I think Michael has uh, uh, passed out a copy of the first direct mail piece that was sent out, but the creative for the second uh, direct mail piece um, has been sent to Gary and uh, is currently being revised and features a uh, lifestyle and the same message that's um, illustrated in the ad, which is get on board. And that will be our new social media campaign, get on board. Um, so that's it for some of those pre-launch activities on the first page. Michael has already mentioned some of the uh, recent community kiosks that we've done at Taste of Douglasville and the um, representative Bruce's Family Fish um, Fry and Family Fun Day at Sweetwater Creek. Additionally, we have the June 12th Lunch and Learn event. It is our final Lunch and Learn. It, the specific focus is the business community. And we're doing that in hosting the event in conjunction with the Douglas County Chamber and the Douglas County Development Authority. Um, we felt that it was a specific need to focus on uh, the large scale employers and the industrial locations that are located along the Riverside Parkway and in that industrial corridor. Um, so that invitation list and guest lists have all been approved. And, um, we're doing direct contact with both the Chamber and the Development Authority. So that will be hosted on June 12th. In addition to the list that was forwarded, uh, it's also the Douglas County Chamber, of course, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, and key staff. So what we plan to focus on there is that the impact, the positive impact of transit on economic development and those businesses. Additionally, we have a series of outreach events where we're going out into the community and providing people the opportunity to get scheduled information. Um, our seniors and people who are eligible for the discounted rate to get information on certification. Um, and those are called our Get On Board Outreach Sessions. That will happen on um, we have a list of these, June 4th, Woody Fight Center, June 11th, Douglas County Senior Services Center, June 11th as well, but later in the afternoon and early evening, Georgia Highlands College, and on June 19th, Douglas at the Douglas County Transportation Center. We knew that it was important to offer the citizens different locations, different times of day, and different days of the week, so that we make sure that we're constantly accessible to everyone. Um, additionally, we're going to also partner at some um, heavy traffic areas where we know there is a need. Um, previously, we went to the Lithia Springs Library. We know that there's a, a large um, segment of the patrons who, uh, who walk to the library. And that branch manager felt that this information was also <coughs> needed there. So we're going out there once more for community kiosks, as well as attending um, and hosting an informational table at uh, Wednesday Wind Down, which is a very popular event in the city. 
So those are just some of the um, pre-launch activities that we're just highlighting, where we're getting that date out. Um, in addition to that, we'll share some information about the vision. We've collaborated with several leaders, uh, including the Connect Douglas leadership and BOC leadership regarding their vision for the launch ceremony. And that event is um, tentatively scheduled at this time, June 19th at the Transportation Center at 11 a.m. Um, it will be staged near the clock tower, uh, which is also referred to as the bus platform. And the visuals right now at this time is to, uh, I don't know if you all have had the opportunity to see more than one of the cutaways wrapped, uh, but uh, Gary and I, we sort of felt like a kid in a candy store because when you see those, um, it creates quite a visual. And so our plan is to have uh, all 10, or is it 11? 12. 12. 12, wow, it just keeps getting better. All 12 of the cutaways lined up along the um, bus platform. Uh, this will provide a backdrop in a, and set the stage for the uh, launch ceremony. So it will, the uh, ceremony will include several things. Uh, of course, um, those that are fitting the invocation, the pledge, presentation of colors, because this is a historic event for Douglas County, and we want to make sure that it has all of those attributes um, as requested. We will also acknowledge the Connect Douglas um, drivers who will be hitting the road the next day, so it's important that the public has a chance to see them, uh, as well as acknowledging all of the dignitaries who will be present. We will have uh, remarks from our leadership, of course, and acknowledge all those special guests. Um, there are several other things that we don't want to just give away right now um, that will be shared on that day, uh, but there will be refreshments available in the Douglas County Transportation Center. We want to be mindful of the conditions it will be um, near summer, if not one day ahead, uh, away, so on June 20th. And we want to make sure that all of the people who are attending are comfortable. Um, but we can only um, accommodate so many people within the transportation center. So we've thought about those things as well. Uh, there will be a, a ribbon cutting and a ceremonial unveiling, uh, in addition to some promotional items and offering people information. Uh, in addition to the events that morning, because the program should maybe take no more than 30 minutes outside and then all the necessary photo ops thereafter, people will be, avail uh, will be allowed to go to the transportation center for a meet and greet of sorts, have light refreshments as well as get information. We will also host our another get on board information session that same afternoon, early evening. There again, providing people who work or who are, uh, have different uh, obligations during different times of the day the same opportunity to meet, get that information, as well as indoors is where we have the capabilities to um, produce the IDs and things of that nature. Um, there is a, a list, I think, of some of the, the people who to are who to are, who to are being included. And in addition to what's printed, I want to also say that um, there's also the inclusion of the, uh, our ATL district representative, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, um, Mayor of Atlanta, as well as uh, Mayor Edwards from the city of South Fulton. So these are just some of those names and some of the information. There is a, a commemorative uh, plaque um, that has been researched and um, additional information that will be provided. So, let's see, and beyond the, the launch, thereafter, um, the next day, we, we hit the ground. So some of the things that we'll be doing to support those efforts are to um, photo, photograph and interview riders and try and gauge their experience. We'll also pitch the information to the media because we want to be in touch and, and have the visuals to document um, not only the ceremony, but the people riding and taking advantage of this service. Thereafter, public input was, this is a um, part of the plaque uh, that was researched, the same vendor that um, created it for the mm -hmm. government annex uh, was contacted, mm -hmm. and this is the initial rendering that we've gotten. We're currently awaiting a quote. 
Um, but other activities include um, continue to distribute the schedules, um, which are currently being produced, and to host a focus group and other types of public input. Because we don't want to wait for people to tell us about their experience. We want to be proactive to gain that information uh, throughout the process. But specifically, we want to host focus groups at the 30-day mark, as well as we will um, administer an online survey uh, administered via email from people who purchase passes and gain their information thereafter. We will continue to work with um, Connect Douglas team um, and um, make any adjustments as we move forward. All right. Are there any questions relative to marketing and communication? Yeah, hold, hold tight and then stay up, stay up for you. All right, um, committee members, again, we've got to keep this very tight and keep us moving. Um, you know, first, um, collaborative, Danielle, Michael, thank you very much for this. I mean, it's obvious you guys put a lot of thought into this plan. Um, and so I, I personally am very pleased in, in what I see. There's a lot of activities with substance. It's not a lot of fluff. I can tell there's a lot of work that's gone into this. And Gary, I know you had your handprint on this. But again, I do appreciate this. Um, it, it speaks volumes. Uh, a couple things I just want to highlight, not to lose it. You mentioned something about our, our commercial um, stakeholders, meaning the Riverside, Thornton, <coughs> and, um, and, and so while you're having a meeting, I believe you said on the 12th, um, for those same people, because they're important to, um, uh, uh, their shared, uh, uh, we'll say customers, our citizens, um, they may uh, work along there or uh, come into that area, that corridor, um, are they invited to the ribbon cutting or are they having their, I mean, are they invited to the 19th or is our intent to sort of broach everything with them on the 12th? The only reason I say they're, they're, they're as important as the dignitaries that we, uh, you know, at least the founders <coughs> and the CEOs of those companies are as important. It's just a sidebar. It's not a, it's not an issue. Yes. Just, just think about it. Don't, ah, you, it's good. Just the sound. Yeah. That's fine. I concur. Um, the general public will be invited. Um, all st community stakeholders will be invited to the historic event on the 19th. When the business uh, lunch and learn was proposed, or when the community lunch and learns were proposed, it was proposed <coughs> one and three. And our emphasis on the first two were with social and community organizations, and the third would be the business. Um, yes, the chamber and all those entities, including the school board, uh, all community stakeholders will be invited to the 19th. And there are discussions on the table with certain members from the chamber, I think specifically the diplomats or the ambassadors, to assist on the, the day of the launch. So there will be a presence from the business community as well. All right, and, and, and I'm fine. Then. And we, we can take it offline and uh, more. Um, when I reached out, um, I wanted to make two things. The citizens of District 2, which is those stakeholders, I wanted to make sure they had their own private audience, which you're fulfilling through this. Uh, but the timing of the 12th and the 19th are so close, it's like, ah, okay. And so I, I just need to think through, um, <coughs> they are important to this. They were one of the key stakeholders to help even push for the argument to have a bus system. Um, we had um, a town hall that precedes you guys coming on board. So I just don't want to lose that thought. We'll take it offline. We're good. I, I just need to close the loop on, on their importance. Um, Tiffany, uh, mm -hmm. and I know you've been involved in this. Um, from Now, see, we've done a great job as external stakeholders making sure they're on board. Have you been involved in the development of the list of people who need to be invited um, from what Madam Chair may think is important? Because I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. So. Um, Danielle emailed me, I think, a couple of weeks ago, um, I guess, trying to I guess get a list together. So I'll get with her and just make sure she has everyone. But from the general list that she has, it seems like she has a good grasp on who needs to be there. But I'll make sure we get the specific names. Right. Has Rick, Rick been involved? <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Y'all close it, please. Close yes, it. I will. Here, here's one thing, like, for example, you, you mentioned the ATL. And we appreciate the mayor of Atlanta and, and the mayor of South Fulton. But without the chairman and the vice chairman of Cobb County. Oh, they're yes, on. they're, they're on, on there. I, I just needed to hear them in this yeah, record. Yeah. Um, as well as um, the um, transportation chairman Boyce, chair. Um, from Cobb County yeah. and vice chairman Lisa Cupid, they would be, I mean, without them, without that MOU, they think here, I, 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 you guys, I, I know we have it now. 
Um, that's important. So I just want to make sure we don't forget it. Um, it, it I mean, I mean, the eighth district are South Cobb, South Fulton, <coughs> and Douglas, uh, with our representative being, you know, core in the city of Atlanta. But I, I just, all of our partners should need to be equally acknowledged. And I, again, I would be remiss. Uh, again, um, if we did not acknowledge Power County. So just, that was just for the open record mm -hmm. in the building of this, that their name need to be mentioned. Okay. Yes. Yes. I know. I mean, uh, yes. For sake. Okay. okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. All right. We understand the importance and we thank you for that reminder. I only um, verbally acknowledge the other two people because they weren't listed on the document. But mm -hmm. Chairman Mike Boyce and um, Commissioner Cupid, who is the transportation chair, are definitely invited and are being asked to participate. If I may, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't share this, as you mentioned, all of our stakeholders. Uh, what we did not mention and is of, um, of importance to note is that we've also had the uh, brochure uh, that we've talked about um, and distributed at many locations. Okay. Uh, well, they've had it. But what I wanted to share was that we've had it translated into Spanish as well. And um, that's been provided to the director um, so that um, should they like to get those printed through their selected vendor, we can do that as well. We also verified the number of students who um, identify uh, of having Hispanic origin, even though it doesn't indicate that Spanish is their primary language. We know that the, the school system makes an effort to provide materials just in case the, the parents are not bilingual. Yeah. So we are, we are moving in a lot of different directions, and this is a multi-pronged approach. Okay. So we thank you for this opportunity to update and we'll remain available for questions or any additions. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Again, there's a, um, to committee members, there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done between now and then, which I know you guys are finalizing. And I won't belabor this because I know we have this agenda to get through. There may be the need to have um, a, I won't call it, a, a full um, special call meeting of transportation. But there will be a sub-meeting, Madam Chair, that we're going to have to do before because we won't have another meeting before we go live. Okay, just so FYI. Uh, Mark, do you're okay with that? Mm -hmm. Just yes, make sure we're all tight and, and on board. Tiffany, do you want to add anything else to this component? Or no, I, I think from what I've um, heard from Danielle in the presentation, everything looks really good. I think they have a really good plan. So I've, I've, I've told Michael and Danielle I'm willing to work with them on anything that they need help from in external affairs. Okay. All right. Um, Gary, are you guys pleased? Yeah. Full speed ahead. Okay. <coughs> All right, I, I won't belabor this again. Guys, well done collaborative and stuff. It's very thorough um, for the record. And so, uh, with that said, Miguel, let's just keep going. Let's shift gears. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Gary, you had a couple other items related to uh, the uh, cutaway fleet and the uh, addition to the. Yeah, the second bullet point is about the, the launch date. Uh, Danielle's done a really good job explaining all of that. I just want to go into a couple of other things real quick. I've, I've got some samples here of the actual passes that we're going to be using okay. for the bus service. We've, we've already started our <coughs> certification process for discounted fares and paratransit um, applicants. Uh, we, we've actually processed uh, about 14 discounted fares uh, where they they actually have their cards and they're ready to, to use them. Uh, we have about 12 paratransit applications in and we're waiting uh, for those individuals to get their doctor's certificates from us. So that, that process is underway. Uh, we anticipate actually starting selling passes next week. We're getting a lot of requests from the individuals who, who want to go ahead and purchase passes. Uh, we'll have a photo op with that for, from a, a group that wants to be the first ones to buy the passes from us. And so we'll, we'll be doing that uh, next week. And all of this is leading up to, to the uh, ceremony and the launch date. Okay. okay. Anything else on that? Any questions, Madam Chair? Madam mm -hmm. Chair? Yes, sir. I just have one question regarding the passes. On this, I see the little, look like this will be a barcode <coughs> scan. How are you going to, how do you scan these? No, ma'am. To, 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 to begin with, it's very low tech. The passenger who is boarding the bus will take that pass and drop it into the fare box. Oh, okay. And if they're the one they pass, they'll, they'll just show that. Show that. Okay. Yeah, it has an expiration date on it. I'm not sure if the 10 punch card one is on there. That will be shown to the driver and there will be punched and then yeah. the passenger yeah. will keep it. 
Okay. And, and then um, a proper, as we uh, finalize our relationship with Cobb County, how will they transfer? What is the intended? If, if someone is, is on our vehicle transferring to a to Cobb vehicle, our driver will give them one of our transfer cards and they'll hand that to the Cobb driver. Okay. okay. And then coming back. They would, Cobb would give our person one of their transfer. Okay. That's excellent. Okay. All right. Miguel? Yes, sir. Oh. Gary, anything uh, on the bids for the transportation center? The, uh, the bids for the transportation center, we've had two <coughs> pre-bid hearings. The first uh, pre-bid meetings, the first meeting we had, I think it was four uh, potential bidders there. And then we had a second meeting that we had another uh, potential bidder there. So uh, we know of five or six contractors that have an interest in it. We hope we'll have more. Um, bids are actually due tomorrow at two o'clock and then it will take us probably two to three weeks to review them and have a recommendation prepared to submit to the board of commissioners okay two p.m tomorrow yes sir okay. well, I'll, I'll dump that with y'all okay miguel all right very good anything else Gary? uh I'm, at this point i'd like to introduce uh a very busy lady right now. This is Debbie Osbacher with Transitions Commute Solutions, and she's going to give us an update on everything that they've been doing over the last couple of weeks. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, we have had a very exciting and positive two weeks uh, since we met last, and uh, we've done all of our hiring. We've got a wonderful contingent of very excited, very positive drivers. Um, we have put them through all the required training as far as defensive driving, passenger sensitivity, CPR, and any other training that they're required to have. And this week we're doing some more hands-on training with the group where we're actually doing uh, real life situations. We're talking about customer service. And um, I can tell that our uh, human resources vice president has done a wonderful job because of the depth of questions that are coming from the drivers, they um, are really thinking about this job and <coughs> really excited to get going. Next week, uh, starting on Tuesday, we will begin actually driving the routes. Uh, each route will be driven by a group of drivers, so they'll each get a chance to go around. We're going to have an abbreviated schedule to get them actual hands-on experience with the routes themselves, um, and they're all pretty excited about that. We actually um, also uh, had all of the tech installed in the van so that we can make sure that we're capturing all the ridership and revenue data that we need to as far as all the revenue miles to make sure that we give really robust training um, numbers back to Douglas County for the National Transit Database reporting. Um, we are finalizing the driver schedule. Uh, with all of them, we've, we've got everything covered. We're working out all the logistics as far as the fare box recovery, uh, making sure we've got that secured, uh, surveilled, and safe for all the drivers. Um, and now we're also working on policies like inclement weather policy, safe harbor, and all the things that the drivers are going to have to know to be successful. So again, we're <coughs> extremely excited about it. Everything seems to be coming together, um, and we feel like we'll be ready. Any questions from the committee members? So you said uh, uh, to, to that point, you have prepared um, the mindset of the drivers. They're ready, um, and, and so they're sensitive. Um, and how long? How long is their ultimate training? Right? And I know between now and then, but what is the real <coughs> training? So next week again, we we begin four days of of abbreviated routes where we'll have one bus running. 10, another 20, 30, 40, and then they'll switch. So every day, everyone <coughs> will learn every route. Okay. Um, the next week, I believe it's June 3rd, we will be full on running a bus schedule. So we'll have several uh, people in each van. We'll be using all nine during the day. We'll run peak routes, we'll run all routes all day long. We'll make sure that we've got all the brakes covered, all the shuttling pick, you know, people picked up at certain locations and switched out. So we will have 
at least two and a half weeks of full-on practice of the routes of a full 14-hour day. Gotcha. And a point of just general clarity out of the, the number of drivers, what percentage of drivers are actually um, Douglas County citizens? I believe all of them are. All of them seem to really know exact. We showed them the, the actual routes today, uh, the maps of them on, on Google Maps. Yep. And we've had a couple of them calling out the exits on the freeway, on the highway. And I mean, they really understand these routes. And they've got, I was just mentioning to Jamal, they already have many suggestions for us for, for different pickup locations. So they, they're really <laughs> aware, they're really thinking of the needs of the constituents and, and um, I, I know that all of them, we had them introduce themselves. They may be recent transplants, but they all live here. Yeah, and, I, and, and I'm fine with, I, I think you could just confirm for us just as a, a, a data sure. point, not important so the stats are. We just, a goal of ours is at least give local first consideration, and I'm just curious what the actual number is. So if you can find out, let Jamal know. Jamal. You got it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anything else? Miguel, Gary? Um, I, I know we've got a full agenda, but I would like to touch on a couple of other things, and I'm going to uh, pass it on to Jamal for that. One is where we are with uh, getting the, the cutaway fleet ready uh, for service, and also where we are with the uh, memorandum of understanding with COP for transfer. So Jamal, if you can touch on those two items. Yes. Well, right now with the preparation of our, our cutaway fleet, of the 12 vehicles, we have five fully wrapped. Um, we have three that are here in our range is being PM, and then there is four that's at the bus center that's doing the shoveling for us to get those wrapped. So we only have four more to, or well, actually seven more to be completely wrapped. Mm -hmm. And then in, re in reference to the transfer, oh, oh yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. So we will, we're looking for like recognizing um, today's the 21st, <coughs> the 20th is the go live date, right? So we have roughly 30 days. When do you think that, that body of work will be officially done in totally wrapped? Yes, sir. What we were told by the, uh, the company that there, it takes about two days to completely wrap uh, a bus. Mm -hmm. So with seven uh, still outstanding. So we're looking from now. One, was, one more was just taken down to them today. So as they do one, we take another one. So we're looking at the possibility of about 14 more days. And those are work days. Keep going. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the transfer agreement, I uh, will copy over here. What we did, we, we have had this looked at and vetted yep. by our lawyer. Uh, we also sent a copy uh, to, the, to the chairman members, and then we sent it over to Cobb Link to Ms. Andrea Ford. She has looked it over and uh, told me that now she's having her uh, legal department look it over to make sure everything is in order before they make an agreement or any change to it. So I'll be looking for communication back from her within the next few months. I, uh, related to that, Madam Chair, I, I did share this um, with our Vice Chair of Cox before they asked this as a draft. It wasn't until they announced it as officially done. Mm -hmm. okay. And I may add, uh, I did have a conversation with Chairman Forrest, and he's excited, and he's looking forward to it. And then he was coming forward, he said he's on board. Yes, so I had a conversation with him last week at uh, ARC. Well, um, Jamal put a lot of work into this, and uh, I also appreciate the work that our county's legal staff did on it. We were satisfied with the document <coughs> submitted to Cobb County, and it's in their hands. Yep, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So, by way of just simple timing, so um, we've had a session tonight. So, and I think they're on this, we're on the first and third week, they're on the second and fourth. So, it's as early as that we, if we don't make there next week, then of course, obviously, we're the first week of June and the second week of June. I mean, I'm trying to time this right because it has to go between, it has to go forth by both board commissioners. So, we're saying we're probably what, three weeks out here? That sounds about right. Uh, that's our right. chair, just mm -hmm. laying up time around for the record. Okay. We, we hope we, we've had at least some <coughs> kind of uh, acknowledgement from Cobb County within a week or so of what they're going to do with it, where we can go ahead and present it to our board during the first <coughs> meeting in June. Okay. So short any edits from them, y'all, I mean, it's pretty simple to get on our agenda these right. this committee, but right. uh, Madam Chair, so we'll just be able to stand by until we hear that. Right. Okay. okay. 
All right, Julie, keep going. You got to keep ready to get authorization to go ahead and put this on the agenda whenever it's ready. Yeah, I'll, 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 I would make that recommendation. If not, you know, we might we might be in between the meeting. Yeah. Then. I'd say administrative. Administrative concurrent. Yep. Okay. Yes. Bring it forward. All right. Very good. Anything else, Ken? No, sir. That's it. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is a uh, Lee Road Phase Two widening project uh, discussion about status and uh, uh, the next steps. Uh, we are, as you have heard uh, over the last several meetings and months, uh, trying to line up the construction schedule uh, for this project. Uh, but the first item of business is going to be to get our design consultant <coughs> back online. Uh, the design consultant that's been working on this project has essentially exhausted uh, or performed their scope of services, and so we're going to have to get the plans updated and uh, get ready for actual environmental uh, document uh, updates as well. One of the items that has come up since the last discussion was we were hopeful that we didn't have to redo the traffic analysis. Uh, however, even though on, on one side, uh, GDON indicated it would not be necessary once uh, the, uh, it was recognized that the environmental document had to be updated, that pulled in the traffic as well. So uh, it's looking like uh, they provided us a, a, an estimate. It's looking like uh, uh, about $152,000 uh, additional cost uh, for the design. For the design consultant. of the Y. Yes, for the update of the plans to get them ready for construction. Okay. So uh, this is an item that is not funded. Uh, obviously in the current uh, budget yep. and it is not reimbursable uh, uh, by the D by GDOT because um, we were maxed out in the original. <coughs> so we're going to have to uh, move this item, uh, tag it to a funding source that could be either the capital transportation fund or SPLOST being that uh, the funding uh, for the match mm -hmm. on the project is from SPLOS. Okay. So that might be the best route to, uh, to consider. Um, I do have the, uh, the consultant's uh, proposal. I'm ready to put that on the agenda if, if there is concurrence and a recommendation from the committee. Okay. So back up, what consultant might have? How do you pick this consultant? Well, it was the original designer. It's uh, Michael Baker who had uh, has done the original plans, and this would be just an update to uh, get the plans ready for construction. This is two studies that go along with the plan, right? Yeah. Well, the, there is the plan the right. There is the plan revision. There, there are two major hurdles to get a project to uh, approved for construction. <coughs> one is getting the plans approved. The other one is getting the environmental document. <coughs> and this estimate, this proposal, would cover both of those. It would cover uh, the update to the environmental document and the update of the plans and the traffic analysis. So once that effort is completed, the project would be ready to go to construction if all the funding is lined up, which we would anticipate. Uh, all right, so this is just for the white. For the white. The white only. We will. Um, and what is the timing that it would take them to do this update, all things being equal? Based, based on where we are in the year with summer approaching, uh, it's probably going to be about nine months for them to update the plans. Mm -hmm. part, of the, part of the reason is that uh, they have to do traffic analysis and the data, they have to uh, get that information during the school year. Uh, we miss the window on getting that uh, done uh, this year. So they will have to wait until school starts up again to get the base data to complete the analysis and submit it for our okay. 
I'm fine. And then, Chair, I'd like to tie this to the SPLOS and keep the, the, the source of funding consistent. Mm -hmm. um, this is Miguel, if you were in agreement with that. I'd yes. like to bring this year, I'd rather bring Yes, sir. Um, recommendation, and let's just get this moving. So, okay. uh, what we're trying to do here is identify the source of funding, which will be the 2016 SPLOS as part of the motion. And, and secondly, um, we're going to bring forth. Um, not this meeting, not tonight, but the next meeting, bring Correct. forth um, the proposal. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, are you in agreement? I don't know. So move. That was her motion. So sure. can I get a second? Are you more discussion on this? Just to make sure we capture what this was. So 2016 um, SPOS is the source. The exact amount again, Miguel? The exact amount of the proposal is hundred fifty-two thousand three hundred and four dollars. Okay. Mark, you okay with that? Yes, sir. And you're going to bring forth um, uh, uh, as part of our next, our June uh, meeting, bring it before the full board commissions. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We'll bring, bring it forth. All right. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion on this motion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Go for it. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Uh, next item is uh, an update on the, trans uh, the maintenance facility not the transportation center that we just talked about. Right, this one uh, that got burned. The one that burned down, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, we have a request for design consultants, uh, architecture, uh, out on the street. Okay. Uh, we uh, will be receiving those uh, at the end of this month. We'll be analyzing those, and uh, depending on where the bids come in, and once we identify a, an architect to, to design the updates to the building. Yep. We will be bringing that before the board for uh, approval of the design contract. The funding for that uh, presumably will be uh, the proceeds from the uh, uh, insurance, insurance settlement. So I think we're covered there. Uh, what I would like to, to get, uh, because I don't have that I'm um, to give you at this point would be administrative concurrence to once we get the, the proposals that we identify the amount, um, since we know the funding source would be to be able to bring that before the board uh, ahead of the next meeting. In June. Ahead of the next meeting? I ahead of the Transportation Committee meeting. Oh, yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah. it would be a meeting that I came before the board. All right, that's fine. Um, um, County Administrator, are you, are you clear on what's being asked? Are you yes, fine? sir. All right. um, the reason I ask that is that, all right, so this is just for the design, not the construction. Correct. Right. Um, it's only going, it's going to, the full amount, both design and construction, will be contained in the insurance proceeds. Is that accurate? That is the goal at this point, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I hope it was replacement value and I think the staff did a good job, but you know how that works. But we need to know that, right? We don't need Before to. we have is old. But I understand. I understand. So, but here's my, my concern always. I don't, we, we want to avoid this sort of that unplanned, um, unplanned um, event where we obligate ourselves to a design and we're down the path with, with an unknown construction. Now, while we have coverage as relates to insurance, I just, I like to minimize the, what, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 5, or plus or minus, if, and I, and to your point, you're, 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 you're framing it like I'm listening to your words that, okay, well, it was an old building. It's like an old car. It ain't going to be, you know, replacement for a new car versus old. They're two different things. I'm like, okay, so what are y'all saying? And so I, I like to have a little bit more clarity before we go to full board mission. How much is this going to cost? Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, Construction wise. Yeah, exactly. And, and the initial uh, exercise is going to be to look at various options, look at what it would take to get the building back uh, operational based on the existing layout and all of that. If the opportunity is there, we would want to be able to reconfigure some of the internal components of the building uh, to, to make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will look to keep that component as well within the proceeds of, of the uh, of the insurance settlement. However, uh, what we're considering now is just 
looking at what options there are, uh, how it, the building can be refurbished, reconfigured, and then we will have a discussion before we make a commitment as to which way we're going to go uh, with bring it back to the committee and say, okay, here's our options related to the construction. All right, so we're going to go through what I call the discover, discovery and the, de the definition of objectives phase before we even get to design. Right, in other words, what are we really looking at? So this consultant's going to go in there, look at everything, and they're going to spend some amount of time at some hourly rate uh, to come up with just sort of the objectives. Then we're going to get into what design options. They're not going to design anything. They're just going to give us options. Options. All right. And you're saying that's going to fit within the. Uh, so how much of this? See, this is where I'm going, Madam Chair. All right. How much in this discovery and definition phase will cost out of that proceeds of nine? Then there's a design component. How much of that is going to be out of that nine? Then there's the actual build or the development that out of that nine. And so one more time, this is being eaten. I'm listening. I'm like, okay, gosh, follow that money. And I, I again, I, you know what it looks like. Yeah, I understand, Commissioner. We, we know uh, that going in, one option would be to try and put everything back the way it was. That, that would be one possibility. However, it, it could be that when they look at the structural component and, and because there, there is a fair amount of structural work they're going to have to do, replacement of beams and the like. They may, they may look at a, a partition that is at a certain location and say, well, it might be actually better if we put that, instead of rebuilding it where it was, put it over here. And, and so those are the elements that they're going to be coming back to us and say, here are your options as it relates to putting the thing back together. Mm -hmm. And We're then there about. would be a cost associated with the barriers. It, it, it's one of those like, okay, we're doing good money after bad. Like, is there just a self, like, do we tear it down? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm like, okay, we're doing an awful lot for this very old building, as we say, an old building uh, that is so old. And we're getting out of that, it's just, it was basically a storage shed. And you're using good new money against something that I'm not quite certain. I haven't been over there. I don't know if anybody's in there. I don't know what's going on. You know, I probably need to a drive by next year. But I, I'm not quite certain. I hear you. Uh, what's, I mean, so how much of this is this going to cost me just to even figure out what to do with this building? That's what we will find out when we get the responses back. Okay, let's we'll start there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, according to the insurance company, the structure is good, except for that one, that one beam. If it, you know, the structure is fine. It's essentially the same as the the building. All right, it's steel building. Yeah. All right. So, but, but here's what well, I want to be careful to jump. But y'all talking about expanding the scope of this building and do it like, okay, guys, we we haven't agreed to that. So I don't want to indirectly this the scope or the, the, the capacity of this building gets expanded. Like, we don't. Where are we going with this? That's all. I, I want to make sure that this is real tight. So before you come up with the design, and I'm sure I think he's right dead on. Let's go ahead and finish out the what the options are, mm -hmm. and let the board commissioners make that commitment on what we really want to do with this, because I don't, I don't think we know enough. Yeah, and as we, uh, as we determine the specific purpose of the building, and I guess my vision is really not aligning with you. With yours, I was looking at something perhaps new. I thought we could just demolish the building and put something up for that price. Maybe not, I'm off in terms of numbers, but I think it's a nice building there, something more state of the art. Certainly, that building is standing as it's built in the 50s. So she's looking at you, mm -hmm. but the structure, <laughs> the structure itself, according to the insurance company, correct me if I'm wrong, Gail, the structure is fine. So, when you rip off uh, everything that was melted and you know, you take all that stuff off and redo it, you can turn it into a nice, right? Building. That's what I'm saying. You can just add yes. the whole thing, and we just needed that. this this first component in order to provide better information to the board as far as which route y'all want to go mm -hmm. going forward. How, how many square feet does this building get for the record? 13? 13. 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13. I think it's 13,000. In the, in the parking lot. Because we triple it moving to the new building. So I have 13. All right, let's keep going. Um, so this, what, what does the committee want to do? You want to move forward with this madam chair? We'll I'm, just I'm, explore our options. I'm just looking at more than one way in the end. I thought 13,000 is an opportunity to slip 15,000 on to make it a little 
So you're just going to look at it? You know, just those are, those are the things. So we, what we're looking at initially is, is to stay within the confines of the existing footprint. Mm -hmm. But internally, uh, it was cut up because there was various operations in there. And, and it may be that we kind of eliminate a partition and open an area up and consolidate offices to one side versus spread out where they are. Because the offices were piecemeal and over that's the why years. That's, that's so why we'd rather have them all again. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait. Yeah, let's, let's, let's keep exploring that. So what is the motion? What, what is the action that you want the committee to take? Okay. Because I don't have a figure as to cost. Mm -hmm. What I am asking for is administrative concurrence to move this item once we identify the consultant to get it before the board for action. And that may happen ahead of our next transportation committee meeting in June. So, so you're saying that you're going to, there's, there's something on the street right now. Yes. And you're going to select out of that group as a normal function. And you want to be able to just move that onto the agenda once it arrives and we may not have a committee meeting before it arrives. Right. That's fine. But, but I'm, I'm going to come, well, but here's my thought. I'm going to come back to, but let's be real careful. If they, you don't know the cost. If the cost comes back nine, I'm going to have an issue. If it, and I'm just making that up. But to, to do what you're, I, I, you're not giving me any context. So, well, I guess we still have the right of the board of commissioners. Yeah, so you that, can, you can just, yeah, you can you just can turn just, it down at the board. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to make it, get your motion. Can I get a motion? To approve this, to move it forward to the Board of Commissioners once the actual um, RFP, is it RFP or RFP? This is an RFP. And our, oh, so it's a request for qualifications. qualifications. So okay. once you qualify, then you're going to get what our person go out there and negotiate? I mean, how are you handling this? Once we identify, uh, they will develop options. And before they design anything, they will cost out a number of options, come back to us, and then we're going to have a discussion as to which way we want them to go. That's that's when we will know what it's going to cost. All right, so who is we is going to be having this conversation saying there's no committee meeting? Is that your purchasing group? It, it, would, it would be uh, transportation personnel. Okay, so separate. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's, it's, it's, it's our procurement group involved at all? Will somebody from Bill staff be involved? In that process, but they are involved in the in the process, but not necessarily making a selection as to which one of the respondents. They would help. be glad to have with qualifications, but as far as which option, yeah. they would not. Okay, please invite me in that meeting, please. Okay. Right. I'll have to go there. Okay. Can we get a motion? So. Okay, any more discussion on this? Miguel, are you clear? All right. Jessica, did you get this? Yes, sir. Okay, we got a motion to second no for the discussion since all members are clear. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody vote? Motion carries 5-0. All right, let's keep going, guys. I'm sorry, keep pushing, Miguel. I know, right. I know, I know, keep pushing. Certainly. Uh, next item on the agenda is an update on the pavement evaluation. Yes. You, you got some information at the meeting uh, yesterday. I do have a map uh, that graphically shows the extent of what's been completed to date. So anything that's highlighted in yellow has been uh, done. So real quick, the pavement quick. evaluation. So real quick, just for the record, Miguel, for the, the so we've got payment evaluation. This was a contract that we awarded to Moreland, um, uh, Alta Belli to come and uh, rate our current roads. Correct. And that's all the roads in the county? That is all of the roads in the county except the dirt roads. Right, except dirt roads. So for citizens like that does not include dirt roads, we'll handle that through a, a secondary process. But all roads that are have some type of um, asphalt on them. Mm -hmm. uh, how many roads is that, and or how many center miles does that mean? Just for the record. It's it's uh, slightly over 700 miles of roads. Okay. Over 700 miles. 
And how many roads is that? Do you have no roughly? I believe it's somewhere around 1,800. I'm, I'm just asking, <coughs> with this report, this, this assignment will provide that level of detail. It, it will. Okay. It looks like they're over halfway or approximately halfway finished. They, they've indicated they're about 60% of the way finished. Okay. We, we, we talked about this in, in, in the work session, so I'll just bring it back up because it's an official topic for this, which is as an outcome, Madam Chair, or an objective, I'd like to know how much it would cost, you know, for, if you have 700 miles, how much would it cost to pay every non-dirt road in this county? An official number um, so that we can add to our long-term capital plan and begin to message uh, with the public about like, okay, well, here's the truth based on priority lists, which you'll, this should accomplish. I'm just hoping we can get to that. Miguel, can you officially for the record say that this will be accomplished with this assignment? Absolutely. In fact, uh, the, the uh, software that is going to contain the data uh, on the pavement condition is specifically designed to be able to give you that type of information. Uh, it, will, it will tell you if you are if you're wanting to do all of the roads at a certain level of uh, uh, construction, say an overlay, yep. it will give you a report indicating to do the 700 miles of roads, strip, strip overlay is going to cost you X number of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you, if you tell it, I have three million dollars to spend, and I want to do a good mix of the roads, some of the best roads, some of the worst roads, some of the medium roads, and some of the better roads do um, perhaps some kind of remedial work. It will give you a list of roads that you can actually do for that amount of money. So there's a lot of flexibility in the program. Mm -hmm. Once the data is collected and input, uh, yes, we'll be able to answer that question uh, within a second or two. All right. So, so really quickly, so this was for the sake of the record. We want to make this official within the transportation community. You said 700 miles, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that Lee Road, which we just did, um, was roughly two and a half miles. Mm -hmm. So two and a half miles uh, equals what? We said 600,000, but 500,000 for the sake of the conversation. So two and a half, I mean, this is sort of like that algebra one and one, two and a half miles equals uh, 500,000, which means 700, uh, I mean 700 miles equals what? 140, Mark, give or take, 150? What's the 150? Give or take for easy. <coughs> uh, one, we know it will tell us the exact number, but for the record, so for everybody to hear this, 150 million is basically the equivalent of a splost. Right, so we're given a comparison, right? Mm -hmm. Which is um, an entire spas. We take an entire spas to pay all non-dirt roads in this town. Now yes. we're beginning to be transparent with the citizens and setting expectations. So you know, again, jail, 150 million for that. This, 150 million for roads as a trade-off, right? But Miguel, the question becomes: We can't do all that in one setting, so Absolutely. we know we can't. So in spreading that out, will they help us help configure a, a long-term paving plan? I'm just making that word up. But yes. you, or is that part of our loan? <coughs> where does that fall? Capital transportation planning? Um, capital planning? Where do we put that big dollar? It, it is part of your capital uh, plan. It, certainly, it is a component of the, of the comprehensive transportation plan. Okay. But essentially, the way you couch the, the ultimate goal yep. is you identify the cost yep. that it would take to do all 700 miles. Yep. And then you try to home in on what would be a reasonable, uh, doable expenditure on an annualized basis. Okay. So between those two numbers, you would come up with, OK, if, if we have, and an example I used was if, it, if you use $10 million a year towards resurfacing and reconstruction, well, if you have so many miles of road to do over the span of time and you put $10 million in, it might take you 20 years. It might take you 25 years to cycle all the way through right. and double back. Now, the, 
the reason you would you would catch it that way is because the life expectancy <laughs> of the pavement is limited. And in fact, between, somewhere between 15 and 20 years is the, the expectation that you're going to have to go back in and do something substantial to that road. Okay. Uh, as you, as the pavements age, then the goal is don't let the pavement that you fix the year one deteriorate uh, by year 15 to the point where now you have to do something substantial. You try to hit it perhaps at year seven, year 10, with some remedial work, and you buy yourself time. So this exercise with getting the pavement evaluation completed for the entire county is going to allow us that flexibility in getting a, a handle on the overall scope of the effort, and then to plan uh, methodically how we would tackle that. Now, and I, want, I don't want to lose this point, I want to keep it going, but just, just let's spark this. It says, at, how long will it take them to finish this exercise? How far away? I know you said 6%, so what do we think? September? Uh, by they're they're saying sure. August, by, by August, so by September we should have it. Can we get an early read mark by our retreat, what you call the retreat? Can we have um, a, a, a status before the commission? We have our your retreat mm -hmm. with this stands. I mean, just because it's yeah. a good input moment going into the end of the year. I bring that up. Um, here, here's what I want to, and I get you when you say it, a regular cycle, but but and this is going to recalibrate the list. So going into 2020, we're going to have a new list with rose rated. My challenge that I'm, I'm, I'm listening is that um, some citizens have never had their roads paid. We're now starting a new list, and now we're talking about well, we're going to be going through every five years, and we're going to be recycling back to maintain. Like, yeah, but you still haven't got through the whole list yet. And I want to make sure that we're not, I mean, it's one of those where you almost like, do we pay everybody one time and like, you're, you're officially, you're done. I get what it takes. And then out of that, you begin to recycle. And I, I just want some thoughtfulness to this, that we don't just make a blanket statement that we're already doubling back on people and other people in the county have never been paid. I, I have a real problem, but Libro finally got paid, but in five years from now, I'm going to recycle people out and just report it still ain't been paid. That's going to be an issue. Well, so let's, let's let me be thoughtful about that. I, I understand that. Let me let me offer this clarification that when we talk about doubling back on a previous road to do some remedial work, is not the same level of effort. In fact, it is a much lighter effort intended to keep it from deteriorating to the point where you have to do the same level of effort. So the so the cost. If it happens to be a million dollars per mile, which it isn't, but let's say if it, if it easy numbers, a million dollars per mile to reconstruct. Well, to resurface, it might be 25% of that. That's it. To do remedial work, maybe 5 10% of it. That's it. So even though you're revisiting roads that you did before <coughs> you touch others, you're doing 5% or 10% of the effort. I understand, and it, we, we, you will lay out a model yes. that will accomplish. I don't think it has to be mutually exclusive either or. But again, uh, District 4 is still deteriorating, right? even with your remedial effort mm -hmm. over in District 2. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's like you, you got to have both. In other words, you got to keep maintaining, you got to keep laying in District 4 while you maintaining and it just needs to be the right balance. That's all I'm saying. Because the message can't just be, and I get what you're trying to get us to, but it's like we're not there yet. We got at least, everybody builds those they've experienced their tax dollars at least one time, mm -hmm. right? And then, so this, you just inherited this angel problem. Uh, we're not in the more dense areas like over uh, across the river, but it's something I just don't want in our narrative that we're talking about doubling back. You know, just gonna hear what they wanna hear. And it's like, well, you ain't even paid my robe yet. And it's just how we message it, so we're fine. Uh, anything else on this? Do we need to take any action then? Uh, or this was no, more of an update? Just an update. All right, let's keep it I mean, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, you want to take it? Okay. Yes, sir. Time to All right, keep going, Miguel. Sorry. Let's keep us going. Okay. We still got the session tonight. Next, next item on the agenda is... Oh, no, real quick. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to do a point of order. Mark, Mark County Administrator, do we have some guests here that they have an issue? We'd like to go yes, ahead sir. and bring them up now and okay. let them speak to us officially at the podium, and then we can go from there. Absolutely. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, very good. Uh, then, 
that we are moving up item number 11, which is the abandonment of the right way at uh, Highland Circle uh, at Timber Ridge. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll let them speak, but I, I do have some background information on that. Uh, but yes, Ms. Good Anna. afternoon. My name is Anne Marie Hahn. Welcome. Thank you. And I live at 4532 Timber Ridge Drive in Douglasville. Uh, I provided you with a, a briefly written page of the current situation. Um, where we have uh, applied for abandonment of a piece of property, which is basically 50, 50 feet wide and 150 feet long, perhaps. It's uh, unpaved. It's uh, largely vegetation. Um, we have been maintaining that property for the past 15 years. Um, there are trees on the property. We've been uh, pruning the trees. We've been taking care of them with the anticipation that we're going to be able to purchase that property. So we have applied for application uh, to abandon the, uh, the closing of the right of way. And um, we seem to have, have hit some sort of a dead end. And that's why I'm here today to find out what that is. That's good enough. You, you staff, help translate this. And yes, the uh, action is being asked. Uh, I certainly will. Uh, the, the location uh, in question, uh, evidently, at some point, was intended to be a four-way intersection. Uh, it is very close to the city boundary, and uh, there was a subdivision built. Uh, within the city, approved, and uh, most of the houses have been built um, within the city that where this road was intended to go, they approved a, a parcel and it now has a house on it. <coughs> Correct. There are three, basically, uh, if you were to go through with that road to that uh, subdivision behind my property, it would affect three homes. It would take one home out completely, but it would affect the other two homes adjacent to it as well. It, yes, if you if you stayed with the same alignment uh, as the rest of the Correct. Uh, so so essentially, the the argument is that uh, although the intent might have been there at some point for that to be a a connection point. Uh, because it's been truncated by a house built uh, within the city in an existing subdivision, that is unlikely. And so the, the two adjoining uh, <coughs> residents have petitioned to have the road vacated. Now, there are a, a number of things uh, as, a, as a matter of background with, with uh, that consideration, and that is <coughs> there could be, and in fact there are some existing utilities within the the existing right of way it has not been improved very much, uh, except other than fairly close to the existing uh, roadway and, uh, pavement. Uh, but to the extent that there are utilities within the right of way, then those easements would have to be preserved by, by mm -hmm. the county. Uh, at this point, uh, essentially, there, there's two questions before the committee uh, that that we need a resolution on. Number one is this something that the committee wants uh, staff to pursue to get better def uh, definition to uh, essentially prepare for the board to consider so that that's consider to do what to consider to vacate the road the vacate road right. right so that is that is one threshold question and the other one uh, would be in terms of existing roadway components. Uh, it appears that the road, uh, the, ra the radii that would lead into the road were built. The curb and gutter was built, uh, even though the road was never improved. Um, that would have to be removed and the curb restored to a T intersection. So, mm -hmm. so then the, the question would be, well, uh, is that something that uh, that would be done? Uh, that would be required of the of the uh, applicants to do in uh, uh, you know for, in order for the county to conserve the vacation. So, so the burden right now, she's she's. What I'm hearing the applicant is currently she's carrying the maintenance. Is that true? She's uh, her opening statement. 
Well, right. yeah, the, the road is not in place. It's it's a it's vacant land or unimproved right of right way. Right. Unimproved right of way. And so, to the extent that there might be uh, limbs that fall or mowing of the lawn, that's the type of maintenance <coughs> that she has been doing. Uh, so, the desire is to have the ownership of the property uh, to. Correct. We use. have no plans to build on that property whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's just we desire to purchase it and just make it clean. So, so that is that is one threshold question. The other one is, uh, and this is a both a procedural and a policy question. Would the county consider just an outright vacation, or would the county consider declaring it surplus and putting it uh, to sell? Offer it for so she plans on doing nothing with it, right? You Correct. Just want to clean it. Right. Mark, I don't doing? think it would be. I don't think it's large enough for anybody else to purchase. Mm -hmm. um, you but we, we have to open it up for the entire county. Um, if it's not buildable, that is a threshold question. You may not. Uh, <coughs> and in fact, procedurally, if it were. Um, something of si significant impact, you have to go through a public hearing in order to do this. Uh, for for this particular situation, I'm not sure that who else would would have a direct interest. Yeah. Uh, so, so we, besides these two property owners. Besides the two property owners. So, so we might be able to dispense with the public hearing component. But then the question is, well, do you abandon it and, and that's it? And, and the, the property would revert to both property owners from the center line of the road to one side and to the other? Or do you abandon it, um, and, well, do you declare it surplus and say, well, <coughs> if either one of them wants to buy it, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll sell it for whatever it is, whatever the value is. All right, so real quick, let's keep this. So today I'm going to think, what would you like to see? What's your outcome first? We would like to purchase that land. Okay. Miguel, can y'all, as, as the tech from Mark, can y'all come back to us as a committee um, on a course of how we get there and make sure that it's legally is allowed? Mm -hmm. You wrote the legal question. Can we, Madam Chair, before we even, mm -hmm. let, let's get that part done. Mm -hmm. Let's pursue mm -hmm. what she's asked um, in that context, make sure it's legal, and then come back with no committee. Okay. We'll thank you so very much for listening. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you will take it. Oh, I am. All right, so that's administrative concurrence that you will move administrative remarks on this. Yes, sir. All right. Yep. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Miguel, anything else now? Yes, there are several other items. Uh, no, no, but not, not on this item. All right, so go back to your dinner. All right, keep going. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Items five and six, we, we probably should take together. It's a discussion, an update on both the comprehensive transportation <coughs> and the transit services analysis components that mm -hmm. we talked about briefly at, at the agenda session. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to just kind of set the stage for it. There, there are two components, one of which is uh, <coughs> up to a certain <coughs> level embedded in the other. So the Comprehensive Transportation Plan has a uh, high-level transit services analysis component. That, that's just the way to <coughs> set up. question is, uh, with the additional transit services that we have now embarked on, <coughs> do we uh, want to, in addition to doing an update to the Comprehensive Transportation Plan, embark on a more robust transit services analysis uh, as part of one exercise, or do we want to do that as part of two separate exercises? Now, uh, <clears throat> the, the Atlanta Regional Commission has certain minimum requirements that they, they are expecting us to do and to deliver to them information based on the grant that they provide us. That does not preclude the county from doing something more robust. They just will not participate in, in the cost. Uh, they will, the, the, uh, the federal funding 
will cover some of the cost of the high-level transit analysis, but not the more detailed one, that if, if that's what the county would like to do, then that would be a separate exercise. Saying that to say that the uh, agreement that is before the board on the agenda tonight is with the Atlanta Regional Commission for the basic services analysis, not the more robust one. That does not require us to keep it at that level because there's going to be two separate contracts. One is for funding with the Atlanta Regional Commission. Then we're going to advertise for a consultant to do a scope of services based on what we want. Mm -hmm. So we would just have to, if the decision is to do a more robust analysis, whether we do it separate or combined, we can do that. Yeah. We will just have to, to couch the uh, RFQ in that fashion. But it does not impact the agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission is separate and apart in that sense. Okay. Let me in. All right, so you have a capital transportation plan. It will be updated. We talked we didn't talk about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't been touched in 10 years, so I think we did do a five-year update. But but that was, <coughs> it's okay. It, we understand. It's just, you adhere to this. I'm not aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the whole point. We're okay with, we know we did a services one. It was somewhat different. All right, so we've got this update duly noted. And it will run for what? Five years or ten years? What, what is our horizon? The goal is five years. All right, so five years. All right, and so we believe that this capital, the capital transportation plan will have basic design elements as um, articulated by the ARC accordingly. We recognize that there are, within it, there is a transit component. Um, and, and please, Gary, help us. When we say transit, which is broadly, um, are we talking about trails? Um, it's not just about what we hear. They hear, like, people hear transit, they hear buses. They hear trains. What is the elements of transit, please? Transit would be transit. If you're talking about trails in, in uh sidewalks and things like that, that that's more a mobility mm -hmm. issue all of this is captured specifically in comprehensive transportation it plan. is in there all right so we're on the same page mm -hmm. all right so and we believe that this will probably take what about 12 to 15 months is that accurate that's correct all right the reason i say that is that if i think 12 to 15 months and i'm sure we we'll just clock the timeline let's say it's june mm -hmm. uh we're talking about and our buses roll out <coughs> We will, have to, at a minimum, it'll take a year to even get ridership data for a whole year, anything to provide as input into this, right? So mm -hmm. we're well into the end of next year, give or take. Is that about accurate? Mm -hmm. Before this will be delivered? Okay. Um, we currently have this budgeted. Is that accurate? We have part of it budgeted. Right, right. We have it budgeted. We have a budget. Yeah. Um, yesterday in, the, in, in our finance committee, uh, Mark, you have to remind me. Um, is we, you, you need to go get uh, someone to confirm this. We did um, add some additional money for this, which we'll cover tonight. Mark, what was that amount? Just the uh, additional. 125000 for the transit portion. You said 125000 So we're up to 125000 Okay, So that was just sort of a, an additional, um, not knowing if it was a match or if there was anything else that <coughs> was needed. So, what we're talking about, in my mind, I'm just talking about one simple, I'm not I'm sure I'm trying to avoid two contexts. Mm -hmm. Two important. stakeholder meetings out there in the community, two different, it's like that's, to be talking about the same thing where the public in their mind, it's all related. Mm -hmm. so can we keep this simple and just maybe have a more enhanced version of the transit component? So one contract, 12 to 15 months, um, and um, as you know, we did award up to 125 yesterday in the finance committee. Mm -hmm. um, I'm open to having, if that wasn't enough, what else is needed? Is it up to 200? And we need your input. So we only could go so far yesterday, but I have no problem bringing it up to the full board tonight. What is the, the, the additional uh -huh. ask? We need another 100 mark? I don't know. Y'all well, let, let, let yeah. me weigh in on, on that. But, uh, what's before you on the agenda tonight mm -hmm. is the 125 would be the local match. It's 500,000 federal funds and 125 local match. Anything above that to do an enhanced transit analysis 
would be essentially that above and beyond I'm standing. that. I'm very clear. We have not identified that. We have a sense of where it might land, mm -hmm. but we don't know that number yet. So the Finance Committee recommended 125 for on that top. above and beyond. Correct. On this top. is above that. So is that a good number or is it not a good number? We need guidance. But frankly, um, it, it, from my perspective, that ought to be a close number, but the consultants are all so busy out there that that may not be yeah. sufficient. Mm -hmm. I, I okay. Well, we'll go over what we got for the sake and we'll just mark it, Madam Chair, because again, there is a process. <coughs> I think the county minister is separating those two separate. 125, what you're presenting for us tonight, is going to get enhanced by a recommendation from the Finance Committee for an additional. So, I mean, uh, we'll clarify all the numbers tonight. Um, you know, if it's 600 for now today and it goes to 900, we'll, we'll find all that's the time, mm -hmm. okay? We just, we're trying to anticipate. Very good. Right. Well, let, let me throw this in way here. for discussion. Yeah, please. We, we could get a federal grant to do a comprehensive transit study, uh, but I think, you, and, and Jan may can weigh in on this, but I think <coughs> it would have to be a standalone study. I don't know that they would pay for a, a component of uh, the, the transport, comprehensive transportation study. So that'd be separate. Right. I mean, can we get clarity on that? Because again, um, I mean, why can't they be the, together? I mean, because again, we're, I mean, I'm just curious. We're trying to keep it simple. We're just trying to enhance the transit component because, again, we're not Gwinnett. We're not Clayton. We're not that big where you need these, this big separate transit. Like, guys, we're not even there yet. We're just trying to get a more, a little bit more robuster transit, right? Because now we've got a bus system, an additional mobility option that's coming online. And we just want to know what does that mean for the next, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. And so I'm not trying to overdo it. Um, and I think the conversation we've had was that we think we can do it within the context of what we have. Now I'm hearing, I want to keep it tighter, Madam Chair. I just can't see going out to the community twice with stakeholders and all this input um, in about the same topic. I, I just think keeping them together is probably the best. But we need some advice, some guidance. So keep talking, guys. Let's try to get to Jan? Jan, come on in. I, I don't think there's a requirement that it has to be separate. The whole thing has to be procured in accordance to 4220 FTA uh, procurement guidelines. Okay. And the, the portion for transit has to clearly state the cost for that portion so we can know how much transit pays and what the 20% match would be for that. Mm -hmm. But it, as long as it's a procurer in, in accordance to 4220, it should be fine. Okay. And we would have to do that on the transportation side anyway. Right. Okay. So it sounds like we can keep it tight, keep it together. Um, let's just have a conversation tonight and make sure you have the up to what may be necessary and y'all will finalize the number. Can we do it that way? <coughs> Mark, are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you see yes. where we're going. We're just mm -hmm. framing it. We're trying to empower, give him what he needs, but based on what Jen just said, look like we can keep them together and have a more robuster um, transit component. And let's stay where we are today. Five years ago, five years from now, we may have to go for a full-fledged one-to-one, but mm -hmm. today, let's keep it. And I believe we mentioned every five years. Every going five years, forward, yeah. Going forward. Yes. Because it's been 10 years based on Otherwise, it gets away from you and the changes are too drastic and uh, the, the public uh, outcry will be higher. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but, but one thing that I want to, to be as clear as I can as much as we can combine the two efforts, no issue there. What's on the agenda tonight is strictly the ARC component. Yes. Anything else uh, becomes <coughs> part of our procedural uh, methodology. Okay. So, uh, okay, but, I mean, like with anything with the Board of Commissioners, we can amend something, right? So my question is, if, if, if we can't amend this tonight for some odd reason that legislative, we can't amend what you're doing because you have some type of federal requirement, do we need to stage this down into the next meeting to allow it to accomplish what we're looking to do, seeing that we're putting more money on this to the hands? I hear you, Commissioner, but you do not have to amend what we're doing. Uh, because, again, there's two different efforts. 
the one one is a contract with the Atlanta Regional Commission for funding, right? And to that get gets funding. us that to get federal funding into the process to do the comprehensive tra transportation plan. Okay. Then so that's one effort. So so this will secure half a million dollars worth of funding. Okay. The other exercise on augmenting that with county funds and combining, we can do that administratively. It has nothing to do with this agreement other than the <coughs> county would have the full exposure of the additional cost. Mm -hmm. right. well, I just want to make sure we acknowledge that. Oh yeah. All right. So I, I get what you're saying. I just I want to be real clear on what, what, what we're trying to accomplish. So I, I want to say it's not either or, it's both. So I want to accomplish the fact that we're acknowledging we're putting up more money and we'll work with you administratively to, to make sure this fleshes out. In other words, we only want one consultant out there doing <coughs> this transportation plan, including an augmented or an enhanced transit component. Mm -hmm. You're getting the, fu the funding, the federal funding today. I'm fine, okay, I got it. But the person, I mean, whatever's out there doing this body of work over the next 12 to 15 <coughs> months, that, that that we recognize that we're putting additional money on, on this for you to be able to accomplish that. that yeah. Do you get what we're trying to do? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gary, please. Give, give us a little time to make sure that we could pay for a component of the, tran uh, of the transportation study with the federal money and also some kind of idea on how much that study might cost. Well, let's come back with that. Right. So what we're saying is that we're already, uh, are y'all listening, we're already offering up some degree of money tonight out of our finance that right. has nothing so you, you didn't know this was coming so i'm saying acknowledge that and then you'll figure out the, the disparity <coughs> or the difference between the two to fulfill this enhanced component mm -hmm. do y'all see what we're doing yes. right. exactly. Mark, okay Mark's not here, but uh, jessica did you get that yes sir all right anything okay. else not on that we're okay. good primarily good. just providing some latitude in any yeah. case we're, we're not making this hard like come on guys this is what mm -hmm. we want okay Okay. All right, anything else on that on, on that component? So we're good for tonight. We're good. Okay, you know. Uh, Great. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is an update on the trail system. Uh, and this is uh, by way of background. <coughs> the county uh, did uh, probably about six, seven years ago yep. a the beginning of a trail system that is not only uh, you're going to encompass quite a bit of the county, but ultimately the goal is to connect many different counties uh, within the region. And, yeah. and this is the Chattahoochee Hills trail system. Yeah. Uh, the, the pilot project that was done by the county uh, the Boundary Borders Park, a little less, about three quarters of a mile, was the very first pilot project done on the entire system. Yep. And we're now in the process of designing another uh, segment of that uh, trail system, about 11 miles worth of it, to go from Boundary Waters to Sweet Waters uh, State Park. Very good. And we have been in the process of doing preliminary design on that trail system for <coughs> about 18 months now. Yeah. And uh, because the, the intent was to have a trail system that kind of paralleled the river as much as it could right. to, to, to grant or provide access with views close to the river. Uh, it gets into sensitive, environmentally sensitive areas. Okay. We have run into uh, several situations where uh, at least where we are now at the conceptual level, if we continue with our selected alignment, we would be potentially running into sensitive areas that would require additional environmental work, perhaps even archaeological uh, digs we're, we're to, ide to identify that. Okay. So <coughs> uh, what's been presented by our uh, consultant is the possibility of <coughs> Excuse me. You can take time, take time. We'll, 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 while you drink it, real quick, so when I hear what we're saying, this is more for the public. So we're saying we're running into maybe 
protected species of animals or birds, um, owls, cranes, geese, whatever they are called, uh, perhaps some ancient burial grounds, archaeological digs. I mean, I don't know what you, and I'm giving you time now. So I, I guess, is that what we're saying? And so are you saying that mm -hmm. perhaps if we keep going down this objective along the river, this view, like, we may need to go a little bit closer to the main. Yes. Okay. That, is, <clears throat> that is correct. I was about to tell you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> we, uh, we have a sense for some of the things that we might get into. Mm -hmm. However, we are uh, precluded from broadcasting. Yes. Uh, therefore, at this point, uh, it, will, it will be left at that high level. I said sensitive areas. Yep. <clears throat> and so, uh, in order to to explore different routes, uh, we are faced with having to re-engage the consultant uh, to to be able to do that. One of the uh, well, I say re-engage, they actually submitted a proposal for additional services because they they did the work along the original alignment, and now we find that that may not be fully viable. We're going to have to veer off somewhere and explore. Can we go this other way? Mm -hmm. And so that takes effort and additional survey and, and the like. Uh, one of the things that they have looked at and that they're asking us to consider is a, an underpass under Riverside uh, Park. I need to decide along what the little bridge, that creek. It might be to the there. west of the bridge. And initially, we had looked at <coughs> actually crossing under the bridge yeah. and coming up on the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's there's sensitive uh, yeah. areas there, mm -hmm. so we are looking to potentially veer off earlier than that, more further west. And uh, because the road is elevated and, and the trail system would be closer to the river level, uh, wow. okay. it, it, it mm -hmm. makes more, perhaps more sense to go under the road. But of course, there's an expense to that. A real expense. Uh, like a culvert type of? A culvert type. Mm -hmm. like, like Chapel Hill? Like the Chapel Hill, Hill Park goes yes. through the hole there. Okay. Yeah. All right, I got you. Very similar to that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I've asked them uh, to explore other alternatives. They have explored uh, an at grade crossing, yep. and they do not recommend <coughs> that um, for a number of reasons, safety being primarily. Uh, I've even asked them to consider an overhead crossing, mm -hmm. and uh, they certainly that could be viable, but it's cost-wise to be just so, so what do you recommend we do? I know this is more of an update, but do you need a course of action that's necessary? Well, yeah, I will, I will need a recommendation. If, if uh, the consensus of the, of the committee is that, that based on the exploration that they have done and the, and the analysis to date, uh, they're recommending that we consider that culvert, then we would have to authorize, we would have to do a change order on their account, on their <coughs> contract to get them to do that and, and design, explore that, and design a, a different alignment for the, for the trip. The whole thing is that we should coexist, we should try to avoid as a general objective, not disturbing stuff like for the sake of a, another objective. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think that there could be a, an equilibrium, a coexistence of both. Um, I, I think we're still in the design phase, um, as you say, for <coughs> for this 11 miles. Um, this is something I do want to give full credit to Commissioner Mole here, who was, you know, obviously our, our, our tree hugger conservationist, uh, but he really helped um, 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 frame this up for us. And I'm yeah. sure we went down to the, what they call pathways or pathfinders, the foundation. Pathfinders. We, we, we spent a lot of the path foundation. So I, I don't want to stop this, but there's, we are at a good marker point, which we probably need to go in a different direction, but what does that cost? Yeah, that's I, I what I was thinking, think. you said change or so what, what is the change? The, the, uh, this one is going to be a little a little steeper. This uh, this is a 240, around 245,000 additional. Let's pause on that one now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can wait to the budget. I mean, I just, it's a lot hidden right now. Mm -hmm. Can we just pause right now? Yeah. Can we just you know, have some, 
some more discussion. Let me talk to a couple of my peers offline. Um, we've got a new commissioner that should be respected since this is, you know, she, let's, let's pause for now. Do we need to act on this now? Or is there some type of um, well, no, the sunset the, or expiration mm -hmm. date if we don't decide? The, the, the only, there isn't an expiration <coughs> date as such, but uh, the, it, will, it will impact the, uh, the project schedule. Oh, no. I understand, but, we, but this is a major turn, so we need to be a, I just want to think about it for a second. Uh, we need to, to your point, do we keep going down this path? Well, I don't know. Um, do we change course? Well, I mean, obviously I know what I, my leaning would be, but we don't have to make a decision tonight or today at our next meeting. No, I think we no. have enough time. So one quick question. That, so this, the 240 is all on us. There's all no, us. the state's already given what they're going to give. Mm -hmm. Anything else, we've already got our max, so anything above and beyond the initial scope Correct. is on us. This is okay. we, we can't, we still this conversation that the board needs to talk about, they have to set in the context of priorities, right? So everybody, you, I think you can see where we're at. So it's like, well, we're given all these other things as a priority. We can't do it all. We have other priorities. So on this one right here, as much as I know that this is important, uh, I do believe doing um, District 3 Commissioner uh, Trinia Carthen, it was expressed that we also, as opposed to only focus on mobility options that deal with diesel fuel and all that, <coughs> it was important, but it's a bunch of cash there. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just thinking, pause, but would you support just pausing for a minute to let us think about what you just said? Okay. You okay? No, I'm, I'm okay. Mark? We may, may even have to carry it forward to our August. Uh, the retreat. The retreat. Bring the better here. Um, to see if we can make it into this forthcoming budget. Uh, being that this lost an option or like Yeah, let me, let me, let's just think about it for a minute. We've got some options. So between, um, Mark, kind of Mr. can you just put that on a, a potential talking point at our retreat? Okay. I, do, I can, and at this I have been discussing, I think it was in my, um, 90 day report for State of the County when mm -hmm. we first took our office. I mentioned that Chatty Fuji trailheads and we've been talking a lot about them. So I know there sounds like it's a timeline associated with that. We need to release it. I know it's going to be beneficial to our public. How, much, in, how much is it fully though? All right, so put it in the context. You're asking me for 240 of the day. How much have we spent and how much is this going to cost even to get out this, this phase? Mm -hmm. Well, from a, from a design standpoint, I think initially it was around 1.7. So 1.7. So, so this would get us close to two. That's just for the design. Right. This is an eighth of the cost. This is a design change, a workload change. I, the, the construction is several million. I understand. Yeah, that, that's off in the future, but but. Um, but that's what I'm saying. This is one. This is an eighth of overall cost of design. Just one workload change. It's a quarter of a million. That's what I'm like. No, it ain't. Like, we can wait till August. Yeah. I mean, all right. So, did you have this on the capital transportation fund? It, it is on there, but but. Uh, that's only for the cost today. Only this for the here. cost. Today. That's I'm saying we got it as a marker. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot. Let's just pause, my chair. Mm -hmm. No action mm -hmm. until we we we'll bring it back up. How far in the future is construction, Miguel? It's going to it's going to be based on funding uh, the design component. Mm -hmm. Even even though we've looked at uh, phasing this out over three different phases, mm -hmm. uh, we would have to complete the designs. You know, select the new alignment, complete that design, mm -hmm. which would take probably another year and a half, and so then yeah, yeah. And, and then we would be looking at right of way acquisition. Mm -hmm. So. Construction might be on the first phase if, if funding was available about four years off. Four or five years. Mm -hmm. We're talking about what, 20, 20 million? 20 for, the, million? for the entire thing, might be close mm -hmm. to that, but the first phase will, will be perhaps. Yeah, I just remember the overall third. cost. We're just, you, you gotta frame it. You, mm -hmm. you gotta frame mm -hmm. 24 million. That, that's another splash, right? That's, I mean, I, I'm just, where we are today, and based on reports that you set forth, it's important that it is just some things you, you can't put the whole sandwich in your mouth, right? You just can't absorb everything. And so I'm like, okay, yes, it's important. Yes, we got work in play. But we only got ten dollars a name, one dollar. And I'm just managing I'm looking at how the cash is like, okay guys, 
we gotta let the rest of it catch up, right? So where's your funding source? So my <coughs> is make I mean, is this considered economic development? If I took two forty out the remaining part of my that ten million that was for SPLOS, we didn't get that right because we took what, six for you and five and put them up. You see what I'm saying? So it's like we spent what about a, a million, so a million plus seven, we might have. I mean you could only pull it from that bucket. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just Straight the board, but saw fit it could pull it from any bucket, as long as it was transportation. Um, yeah, but I don't want to. I'm saying I'm willing to put a scheme with a bigger picture. Oh, yeah. I don't want to compromise uh, one of the, the districts, uh, which you know it's supposed to be like an equal sharing. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I mean, just so we would take a hit in the economic because we have more discretion. Mm -hmm. There was nothing tied to it, so that's perhaps a source. Uh, so it's already June, July. I mean, we can hold off a couple of months, let us massage this. We probably can get there, Miguel, but it's going to take a minute, right? It's just, mm -hmm. We're already making amendments to the budget as we fly, and it, it's a lot right now. Yeah. yeah. If you will feel this pause it. With sidewalks and street lights being on. Sidewalks. Okay. Yeah, we pause. We bring Let's it up. Duly noted. Um, yeah. Identify the sources being the 2016 economic development as possible. <coughs> but we'll take it up at. Um, all right, keep going, y'all. Keep pushing us. I'm right, sorry. Very good. Thank y'all all. Thank, Thank you, sir. Can you go? Yep. Yes. You got it? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is Interstate West uh, Park <coughs> resurfacing funding. Hilton Hotel, Dr. Patel? Yes. All right. And, and company. And, and uh, we have uh, initially. We, we looked at the road conditions, and, and, and Commissioner, we, we appreciate your having looked at it up close over there, too, because uh, we had a sense of the condition, but not as bad as it got within the last several months. So we took another look at it, and we were prepared to do quite a bit of reconstruction there to get it, get it put back together. But uh, after looking at the funding and, and the fact that it, it had not been budgeted within our, our budget, the capital budget, uh, or operations budget. Uh, we looked to, okay, how can we do this? That is a, more, it's a permanent enough fix, but uh, with the funding uh, limited as it is. And so we looked to, instead of reconstructing the entire section, we were looking at uh, uh, mill and in pretty much like we did with uh, with Lee Road. Yep. And so we have uh, a, a proposal working its way through the system to do the milling. Um, I think it's been approved. And, uh, yeah, glad to see it out there. Yeah. It, it's uh, yeah. And so I think it, I think it was today when when the final uh, approval was was made on that. So we anticipate uh, being able to to do the building, and then that is going to be contracted out. The rest of the work that we're going to do in house, uh, but okay. it's going to take probably about a, another hundred uh, and twenty-five grand uh, to to be able to do that work, which we did not have budgeted. Uh, we have, in order to expedite the process, we've transferred some funds within the operational budget, uh, but we're looking for a funding source for the materials to do that. Uh, so, so that is a discussion that, uh, I mean, that, that for me, Madam Chair, we're, we're talking about the, um, the interstate west, interstate north, or interstate west? West. Yeah, interstate west, Parkway, um, basically Hilton, Home suites um, to really complete this. Uh, it's an additional 125. Um, it's something that we committed to. Uh, I think the source should be the 2016 on this. When you think about, when we're making consideration <coughs> investments in our um, in our community. Um, this owner has put up two hotels in the two. You know, Ten years I've been in office, um, mm -hmm. and, and so real investment paying you know, the largest pair of hotel hotel taxes. Uh, so there's sort of in my mind a vesting, like we can't pave his front yard. We we, we can't. It, for me, there need, we talked about value exchange, mm -hmm. and I, I think that what's being asked is, is not unreasonable. Uh, we obviously we have it within our economic development 
they're already in that's the Thornton Road area with that one that was identified for you members here. Mm -hmm. So and, and if you will support, I have no problem with the 125 ask to get that done. That's been way too long that we conceded to do it. So. <coughs> Mark, I need you to weigh in. 125, we we'll use the source, the economic development component, which that's the, the dollars that was intended for for this area. You said 125, did you say <coughs> 125? Yeah, I, well, I said 125 additional to uh, 35 that we've already uh, come. I see. That's what so total is 160. But you already have budgeted it. Well, we, we took our, our operational budget that we intended for other repairs and what have you just to move this process forward. Okay. So, but then you need a one, uh, 125. Yes. 125. Well, we need it. What, what I'm looking at is, is to have. The 35 that I've committed out of my budget that I didn't have, replenished. So uh, for that to be out of this process, we so may ask you this. <coughs> the space that I'm thinking about, it's just a little small, but quarter of a mile, just 160 there, miles. There's two of them because it's a loop road. Oh. So it's the, the, the section by the Walmart. Mm -hmm. And then the other section of the hotels. Well, those are two different things. I'm always thinking there was just like, well, I get the Walmart side, but okay, are we seeing that his efforts tore up that over there? Or are you just trying to knock it all that out? No, yeah, do it at the same time because we're. <laughs> okay, see, I'm going to how are you going to blame him for. for no, no, no. It's, okay, it's, it's, it's all not the anyway, we, there. We've made the commitment to, to, okay. to do it. Uh -huh. What, what is it, Mark? 165? 160. 160. Done. Okay. Yeah. So, recommendation. Let's do a recommendation. Mark, yeah. call it. Okay. Uh, recommend we uh, recommend to the Board of Commissioners to use 160000 out of the economic development portion of the splash to finish the million inlay of, or to complete the million inlay of Interstate West Parkway. Second. We got a motion and a second. All right. Let's make sure as part of this, this discussion that we're keeping up with these dollars as part of that new um, capital transfer. I want to how do we mark <coughs> these type of dollars in new reporting that's being done in finance? Remember that? Yes. Can you make sure that we, we make sure it's that more than finance has once the board approves it. We don't do it yet. We wait till okay. the board approves it and then we that's really sure we put it in the board. Okay. All right, we got a motion to second. Any further discussion? If none, can we get a motion to approve? Everybody say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Okay, we're going to keep going. Okay. Uh, You're doing good. We're pushing. Push. We push. are. Uh, <laughs> the next item would be actually, if, if, if you would, I, I would like to move item number 10 up because. I think uh, yes, uh, item nine probably will require more discussion that we might want to get into today. But okay. uh, item number 11 is pavement striping. Uh, at a prior meeting earlier this year, I think it was in March, uh, I, I indicated to the committee that, uh, that we were looking to get a grant from GDOT uh, for striping. Okay. And uh, they, they opened up, and this was uh, uh, one of those, rat, not a program thing, but uh, apparently, not apparently, but uh, periodically <coughs> they have surplus funds or funds that were intended originally for perhaps resurfacing or other things, and the local agencies can't come up with their match. Yeah, those funds roll back into their bucket. their bucket, and then they approach other counties and say, you know, would you have a project that you could utilize these funds with? And they said, yes, we have, in fact, quite a bit of uh, pavement uh, striping that, uh, that we've talked about that we want to do. And so we uh, put in, we told them, yes, we're, we're in, we gave them a list of roads, and they gave us a grant uh, for two hundred and ten thousand dollars to do road striping, we have uh, uh, many miles of roads that we can do with that. Okay. The there is a thirty percent local match, which will require ninety thousand uh, dollars 
from the county to do the, to to be able to move that project forward. So we will yeah, need. Yeah, you got it. I'm telling you, you you just like it. Just <laughs> <laughs> What? All right, right. That's why I'm trying to like no. Okay, so if you want, if you want an economic activity, yeah. you got it. All right. So second, so with, with, with cycling, okay, but we also recognize, um, Madam Chair, for some, a safety perspective. And some of the comments that we did give back to seniors that if we make sure we nice, let's these mark and strike the roads accordingly. So this does line up with just general safety, especially at night. Um, and so, how many miles does that 210 to 30 percent match does that get us? I mean, what does that mean for us? Um, I, I, would, I don't remember exactly how many miles uh, at this point, but it's quite a bit. Uh, so would it go along with the, so would it help <coughs> supplement the existing SPLOS and LNIG project, which means that funding would carry further, carry more resurfacing because we are a little bit more simply because we had that stripe and originally included in the contract. As good as that sounds, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, let, me, well, let, me, let me pick back up that there. But could it be, there are certain people that are on the list that uh, they're not really qualified to be resurfaced, but striping may be appropriate. That is exactly where they're on the <clears throat> it, It's for roads that are not part of the program. And uh, we actually had to go out with the GDOT representative and, and drive those roads yep. because they we had we had a list that was probably closer to a million dollars worth of striping, and we selected a subset of that and we went out with them and, and they confirmed that yeah this one qualifies. So uh, out of the list of the universe of roads that we had <coughs> between us and them. Uh, we select a specific roads that are going to be part of this. Mm -hmm. All right. So, if all Mark, you will appreciate mm -hmm. this. All right. So, again, go back to our our TAN conversation. One of the conditions that Jennifer Hallman, our director, that's my director of transportation, says the use of that funds can be used for G dot grants or funding so we can make our match uh, for things that were unplanned. So, I see this as perhaps taking um, this what ninety thousand, ninety thousand, ninety thousand out of that. Because it's a one-time hit. This is not an ongoing, right? No, this is a one-time contract. One-time contract. What do y'all think? Um, other than I'm thinking about an alternative source. I mean, take it out of the, the ten surplus, or you want to take it somewhere else? I'm open. I would recommend splot. Take it out of that ten. It's right. hitting. Yeah. I'm just offering it up. It's taking the <coughs> up. She 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 framed it as for G dot matches to grants or other things that maybe come down the pipe when we're not playing. So I'm just, I'm holding it to what she recommended or framed, but I'm okay. I just want to say that for the record. So we'd rather use the one we don't qualify. I would say squat. Safety, safety portion. We got nothing there? Well, we have a million. We have two traffic signals that are included plus the street lights. Take it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, initial street light, and I'm not through looking at them yet. But I understand. Not that much. I think over there. You're probably looking at less than. But it's all part of that same bucket. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. all part of that same bucket. That is yes, doing that we have left over. Still, still looking at that ballpark. That's a little bit high too. Okay. All the lights include. I mean, I know the ones on Everything. the All. Everything. Well, there's some that I don't have yet because Georgia Power wouldn't give it to me. Okay. There was some waiting on the stone for that. Are you guys okay? I think I'm okay with this because we did have that million dollars left over after that recalibration and moving over from the um, we, uh, from the Anway Yes. All right. So we do have. I would agree, Mark, 100. percent So I'd like to. Um, um, I need a motion for a recommendation to move um, ninety thousand dollars out of the um, improvement component of the economic development bucket of the 2016 SPLOS to be used as a source for. Markings and striping grant that we got from the GDOT. So, mm -hmm. okay, that's the safety portion, correct? Yes. Yeah. The safety component. Yeah. No end all. Yeah. yeah. So, we got a motion? Second. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries five. Yeah. And also, would this be inclusive of oh, the striping that uh, I already agreed to do something in the same for the striping? of the uh, entrance and exit <coughs> ramps on the interstates, uh, on the state interstate. Yeah. 
cost or they won't pay them off as well. Those, that's going to be done under the repaving project to the, to the extent that they're uh, milling and inlaying, they will do new striping there. And if they go into the ramps, to the extent that we, we do that as well. But the roads for this particular grant have been selected already. It just can select and keep some. Okay. Gil, what else we got? Okay, well, the last item uh, <coughs> would be a discussion about the capital transportation fund. I don't think we're going to get into a lot of detail, but perhaps the beginning of a discussion. Uh, you had mentioned, uh, uh, Commissioner, a possible call meeting in June. Yep. And, and I would suggest that we we continue the discussion on this item at that time if we could. Uh, but essentially, the, the issue is, where, where are we with, with the uh, funding lines, with the Capital Transportation Fund? Right. And uh, based on the changes in the, in the budgets for the various projects, yep. uh, we may have to at some point decide that there are certain projects that although we may have wanted to pursue that we may have to beg off for them for a while <coughs> they fall below the line they become yellow like just like our spots mm -hmm. exactly. mark you agree with that i said can we not madam chair if you don't mind i think we, we've had enough to, to swallow right now and i, I just think that that's going to take, I, I want to get some dedicated time for that capital transportation fund. We did talk about this yesterday during our finance committee, but I, I think we, I mean, unless y'all want to go, what do you want to accomplish today? Is this supposed to be more of an FYI, or can we pick this back up? It's just so we, we introduce the topic and then are able to roll it into the next meeting. And, and there, there's another uh, item that I would like to give the same consideration to, and that uh, it goes hand in hand with this to, to some extent. And that is the Chapel Hill widening uh, effort. Uh, as you Roast that for the record. I uh, yes, as, ask, you, as you may may be aware, <coughs> we had a public meeting uh, in connection with the uh, turning lanes yep. uh, for a, se a segment of that road, yep. and it was very well attended, uh, both by residents of the area and residents from clear across town. Uh, so, but by and large, they were very supportive, not only of the project that we have ongoing now with the turn lanes on the sidewalk, yes. but they were more uh, or, or just as intense and clamoring for the widening of the road, longer term. Uh, the, cap the capital transportation, uh, I'm sorry, the comprehensive transportation plan uh, proposes to widen Chapel Hill Road yep. all the way through. Um, that was back in 09. Uh, in 09 and even prior to <coughs> it may have been listed, but certainly from 09, it's been envisioned, but it's been off in the future, one of these longer term goals. And um, based on that, on the uh, feedback from that meeting, it, it's pretty apparent that they're, they're having um, a lot of traffic cut through. Uh, their section of the two-lane road, and they they are very much supportive of widening uh, the road. So um, it would be an item that will be taken up as part of the capital transportation plan update. Yep. Which we talked about briefly and okay. didn't get underway. But it might be something that we start thinking about in terms of priorities because it is going to be a, a rather uh, Expensive project. Let, to, all right, so let's put that on um, like with Lego. Um, uh, Tell me, sure, let's put that on a long chain capital plan. Okay. Which is the Chapel Hill widening, the one called project. Mm -hmm. We're okay. just going to mark it and we'll come back to it. Do we need to take that? <coughs> so it doesn't sound like we need to do any design or dollar allocation at this moment to study it because it's going to be encapsulated in the, the uh, CTB. I'm sure you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yes. Um, um, so for the record, um, I say keep moving forward. Okay. okay. Anything else? Very good. And, and just uh, just an update. Uh, there was an item on the agenda that I asked to be pulled off yesterday. Yep. It was a change order for the ITS project. Uh, there were several components on there. 
And uh, as I mentioned at, at the agenda session, some of the components that GDOT had to make a commitment to do before we could move forward, and uh, we've gotten that commitment from them now. Uh, in fact, they, they, based on our last discussion, it appears that instead of uh, what we thought they would have to do before, they're going to do even more. So uh, we will have a change order coming back on the agenda, uh, not at this meeting tonight, but at the next meeting. <clears throat> but it's going to be substantially reduced in, in cost. Okay. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. I have one item. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to a previous question. I just thought about this. And um, uh, Commissioner Mitchell had brought this up to us. Now we got further along with um, going live. It was this ongoing. Um, once the buses are live, we had talked about it once before, but we just weren't ready to broach this or bring it up in this committee, which was advertisers for the bus. Mr. Mitchell said that he had maybe broached the subject with you, Gary. I'm just making a record, so make sure you tell him I didn't bring it up. But is there any thought to advertisers, people who want to advertise on our our, our bus system or sponsor um, something? Have we had any more thoughts to that? I just had one up and you know that. Well, yes, right sir. well we, we've had very preliminary discussions about that. Yep. Uh, we certainly think it's a possibility that something we want to look into, but honestly, we just haven't got that far. So, yeah. So, I mean, again, first things first, let's get the system up. Uh -huh. I understand there's probably some value in leveraging advertisers out the door, but first things first, right? This, yeah, this is public, not private, so I'm willing to, y'all can tell me if I'm wrong, I'm willing to be, I don't want to amplify nothing. You know, you got to be careful when you start amplifying, because I, I know maybe perhaps um, with him comes a bigger, audience and leverage up to you know really true broadcast radio media and I don't know if I'm ready to turn it on like that yet. Yeah, we'd have to set some kind of policy as to what kind of advertising we would set up and things like that. All right. so. But for the record, we, we've got your record. We will entertain it. I'm only on let staff y'all work directly with him. He comes out of programming. You don't have to come to, you know work it out. Okay. Miguel you okay with that? I am Again, commissioners will go where they want to go. So I'm, but I'm okay if you guys come up with something you want to bring it back. No problem. Good. Mark, heart, mind clear. You good, sir? Good. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I know we're rushing through this, but yes. you know, we need, I need a break. I need a rush. You know me. Anything else? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. If there's nothing else that needs to come before this transportation committee meeting, thank you all. Very robust. Jessica, I hope you got all that. That was an awful lot. Yes, sir. Um, meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you.